Hello, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Saga and I studied aerospace engineering from the University of Sheffield and graduated this year in June, aka June 2021. And I'm guessing you clicked on this video because you've either started your studies in aerospace engineering or you are thinking about studying aerospace engineering at university and want to know my secrets as to how I got a first class at the end of my four years at university. But before we jump into this video, I want to say a massive thanks to all my subscribers because we've managed to reach a grand total of 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome, guys. So thank you for your support on this channel. Anyway, back to the main reason why you're watching this video. So how did I achieve a first class in aerospace engineering at university? Well, it mainly revolved around four key areas. So the first one was how I studied. The second one was how I managed my time. And the third one was who I hung out with. And the fourth one was my overall strategy to try and ensure I get a first class at the end of my four years at university. So the first thing is how did I study? Well, I mean, I guess I studied pretty well. I'm only kidding. That's not what I'm going to talk about. So. How did I study? That's the question what we're asking. Well, I basically work through tutorial questions, which are basically question sheets that the lecturer provides you for each module in your course. Um, and if you do all the tutorial questions, you're very well equipped for the types of questions you're going to see in the exam. And uh, that's one of the main things I did to try and ensure that I understood what I needed to know for the exam. Because the, the interesting thing about university is, you know, most of the things that you're going to see in the exam in my case, it was more or less 99% is always stuff you are taught in lectures. So, you know, the answers are always going to be in lecture slides or your tutorial sheets. And I'd say there's no actual reason why you need to go and read textbooks, despite what some lecturers may say. And I can say this quite confidently because um, I studied at the University of Sheffield and I also studied at the University of New South Wales in Australia. And in both of those universities, even though the lecturers did say, oh, buy a textbook, it's going to help you if you learn from that and you're going to get really good grades if you if you read them. Well, I didn't do that and I still got a first class. So I'd say I, w I wouldn't go out of your way to buy textbooks. And if you really wanted to read the textbook, just use the PDF online because the value you're going to get from the textbook is not that much realistically, especially if you're working on just using your lecture notes and your tutorial sheets to understand the content a bit more. The good thing is that using um, these practice questions really helps you with your ability to revise because you're actively recalling ways in which to solve the problems and I think active recall is quite a a solid way of learning and revising content and I think a lot of people do talk about active recall and that's why I'd say just practicing questions practicing past papers or tutorial questions is the best way to learn and understand the concept of each module in your degree. Moving on to how I managed my time well I managed my time using a watch because they're pretty good at telling the time. Just no, I didn't. Let me just tell you how I managed my time. So what I did was as soon as I got an assignment or a piece of work I needed to work on, I tried to make progress on that from exactly the day that I got that assignment from. Even though I only did maybe like one paragraph or even less than that, at least I got started. And that's one of the biggest challenges with your university work because sometimes you're gonna get so much work to do I think the tricky part is just to get started because you're going to be working on something else. So I think if you make that first little step towards completing your project or your assignment or whatever it may be, it's going to help you in the long run. At least when you come back to it, you're not going to be facing like an empty page on the computer and you know, you have something to work off. The most important thing is, is just to make sure you do everything on time and make sure you submitted your assignments, your coursework like before the deadline because at my university if you submitted it late you get percentages taken off your grade that you would have got um, for subsequent days so maybe after like one day it's like five percent and then two days it's ten percent get taken off so you know if, if that happens if you're regularly late in delivering your assignments you're just you're leaving marks on the table pretty much so there is no need to do that really um, and yeah that's my main thing just 
don't submit anything late ever. So like I said before, sometimes you're going to get maybe one, two, three assignments all at the same time from different courses. So maybe you have one in mechanics, maybe you want to have in fluid dynamics, maybe in materials. So you have like a third assignment you have to create. So the thing is, if you finish one assignment, just make sure it's, you don't have to be perfect with it. And I think a lot of people struggle with this because they're looking to make that one assignment just perfect and amazing. And you know, because the deadline is so far away, they keep tweaking at it and they forget about the other stuff. And the, the scary thing is that sometimes you can work maybe three weeks or so on one assignment and then all of them are due on the same day. So you only have maybe one day each for the other two. And that's not the best way to go about doing it because you're not going to give the attention to the other assignments that they need to get completed properly. So something to consider is, you know, you have to try and work on your assignments to make them good enough to get a first. Um, you know, I'd say not don't don't aim for 70. I'd say aim for about like 80, 90, but don't stress about the small details on every assignment because, you know, sometimes you just want to complete the assignment, submit it, and then not think about it. And that's a good tactic, actually. If you submit the assignment, then you know you can't ever re-edit it. So the good thing is, once it's gone, it's gone. You, do, you just stop thinking about it, you move on to the next one. And that's, that's how you really stay on top of your work and not get you know backlogged with all the other assignments that you've been stuck with. Um, so that's my tip on how to manage your time effectively and you know ensuring that you get the best grade on each assignment and therefore hopefully getting you a first in your degree. So the next section that I want to talk about is who I hung out with whilst at university. And I'd say this is probably the most important aspect of the four that I'll be talking about in this video, primarily because people who you hang out with are such a big influence on your life. and. You know, you can think about this where, you know, as you're growing up, did you always end up doing something similar to what your friends are doing? So in my case, I remember when I was in school, a lot of my friends were interested in studying aerospace and so was I and therefore I ended up studying aerospace and then at university, a lot of my friends were very smart and intelligent and were driven to get a first class in my degree and what happened to me, I got a first class as well. And then we also were driven to get good careers in technology and engineering. And look what happened. I ended up in a good career with technology. So I think that's the main thing to understand that people who you hang around with make a huge difference to, you know, your outcome in your life. And there's like people, there's sayings that go around. I don't know who's the one who invented the saying, but they say, you know, show me your friends. I'll show you your future kind of thing. So it's true. I mean, you could just do it with your own life. You can think about who did I hang out with and did I end up doing something similar to what everyone else who I was hanging around with did. So yeah, um, stay and hang around with people who want to achieve a first class and it's very likely that you will end up achieving a first class. Lastly, I want to talk about my personal overall strategy at approaching a aerospace engineering degree and ensuring that I do achieve a first class at the end of my four years. So the first thing is to treat your first year as important as all the other years because generally your first year is not counted so the grades aren't accumulated and are factored into determining your final year or your final course grade should I say. But the thing is your first year really does give you that foundation knowledge to then build upon in your second or third or even fourth year if you're doing your master's, um, an integrated master's degree. So it's kind of like saying, you know, if, you, if you're building like a house on like some shitty foundation, it's not going to be a good house, is it? So you want to make sure you really understand the, the basics that is in aerospace engineering and that is your first year. So if you do piss about in your first year, you know, it's not going to, you know, explicitly affect your final grade, but implicitly it will. So I'd say do concentrate in your first year and do try the best that you can in your first year. The second part to my overall strategy was to try and get 100% on everything I do. And I didn't get 100% on anything to be honest, but, but it's far better to aim for 100% on everything and rather than aim for 70% on everything, which is the threshold to get a first, because the thing is, you're giving yourself a good 30% buffer if you're aiming for 100%. Because if you drop 30% of your grade, you're still within the you know, first class region. But if you aim for 70% and then drop 30%, well, that's like 
2 to almost like just a pass sort of grade level. Um, so I'd say do aim for the best that you can because it means it'll give you that flexibility of if you do drop a few you know percentages you're still within a good top grade and I guess the best analogy for this is when you see you know the Olympic sprinters run 100 meters right they don't just run 100 meters no no they they run 100 meters with the assumptions that they're running 110 because they run through the finish line they don't just stop at the finish line because that's the end of the race um, because if they did then you know they'd, they'd lose so it's the same same mentality that goes with try and achieve a hundred percent even though that's not the you know the target you need to win the target you need is technically 70 um so that's that's why i'd say that's how i would say to approach like every piece of assignment every exam or you know whatever you're doing at university the last strategic thinking method thing i was doing in my time at university was to really double down on the subjects i knew and understood and liked the most because i knew i was able to get really good grades in these and you know the thing is it's natural that throughout your time at university some of your modules you're going to do really well some less so and you know i think i i approached a strategy where i'm i know i'm not gonna enjoy some of the modules i'm looking at you materials materials was a a nasty boy but anyway um the thing is it's like if, if you really do well on some of your modules and you do you know mediocre on your other modules they will counterbalance and therefore you will get your first class so for example i was really great in my coding modules and my maths modules so i was getting you know 90s to high like 70s or 80s in these types of modules Whereas materials, you know, I, I didn't quite enjoy it. I didn't like the subject, therefore I didn't do so well. And I got around, you know, like 60s. So the thing is, is if you do really like a subject and you you know it well and you, you have, you enjoy revising it, I guess, in a way, really do go like at it and make it the highest score that you've got ever. Because there will be modules where you don't want to do that. and. You know if you do have the really high you know 90s 80s sort of grades on some modules it will like counterbalance and bring up your your lesser modules so in theory at the end of the four years you will end up with a grade averaging around 70 something and therefore getting a first class so that is my strategy and my final strategy of how i you know navigated my four years at university to ensure I get a first class. So there we have it. That is my super secret sneaky tactic way of getting a first class in an aerospace engineering degree in the UK. Um, I mean, it could be extrapolated to other places in the world, but since I studied in the UK, that's what I'm going to say. Um, so yeah, hopefully this helps you get a first class in your engineering degree as well. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Comment down below if you're already studying aerospace engineering or are thinking of studying aerospace engineering. And I suggest you watch this other video, which is all about what aerospace engineering entails if you are thinking about studying aerospace engineering. Cool. See you around, guys.